Hi, and welcome to another edition of Ruins of Empire with your host, Rafael Pinero. I will continue in our discussion about Dragon Age 2 and the lessons you can extract from this game. I noticed that a lot of people who actually like the game, they like the game because of the characters. And that is no accident. The game really leans on the characters to uh, get you engaged and to move you along the multiple stories that the game has to offer. However, there are some significant problems with how the characters have been portrayed, created, and used throughout the game. The first one is the idea of what we call the boy band approach to character roster creation. Uh, the character here, uh, each one of them seems to feed an archetype or stereotype, uh, much like a, a boy band, right? Uh, there's just enough uh, character archetypes to fit what most people would want to be affiliated with. Uh, you have your emo characters, you have your you know strong, sporty characters, you have your fun characters, etc. And that is designed basically to hook you in. You may not like all the characters, but you always find one or two characters that are that you're going to like, right? Uh, the problem, of course, is the way the characters are used. First of all is the fact that this game really relies also on romancing. That's something that uh, Bioware has been developing for some time, uh, for a long time, really, all the way back to uh, Bardus Gate, should I say Baldur's Gate, uh, where you could romance one or more characters. Uh, and that has become increasingly uh, an important part of uh, many games, including Dragon Age, Neverwinter Nights, and, Dra and Mass Effect. The idea that uh, you can form romantic relationships uh, with one or more characters, usually with one character, as the story progresses. And that's sort of creating, a, a doubling down on the bond between uh, the player and the game. Right? You not only become invested in the characters, you become invested in a particular character, their fate, their emotions, their reactions. But again, the way it's been done here in Dragon Age uh, 2 is what I call James Bonding. The idea is that all characters are, for all intents and purposes, they are hawk sexual. They exist to uh, fulfill sort of the sexual aspect of the uh, gaming power fantasy. They're all made available to the character. Their sexuality basically serving the needs of the player instead of serving the needs of the character themselves. Instead of being something that the characters own, or being a defining characteristic of, the, of each character, it simply exists so that if you want to, you can have this fantasy, uh, uh, fulfillment of fantasy. And mostly this is straight male and straight female fantasy, where there's the yaoi or jury uh, approach. And it basically means uh, boy love or girl love. You know, it means lesbian or uh, gay relationships but seen from the point of view of straight people, straight people who have a particular fetish or fantasy about this. This is really not about diversity because if it were about diversity, it would be about how the characters represent themselves and how they project themselves, right? For example, you have the character of Anders who in Awakenings, which is a DLC for Dragon Age Origins, basically was straight. And in fact, he emphasized, emphasized the idea he was straight over and over and over again. All of a sudden, the character is now gay. Well, bisexual, but primarily gay. And I think it was done just so that uh, you can have this particular fantasy idea of two, you know, a male uh, hawk getting together with, with an Anders, you know, and to have that particular fantasy for certain members of the audience. Uh, and all, almost all the, char all the romanceable characters seem to fill that attitude as, oh, yeah, except for uh, a DLC character, uh, Sebastian Vale, who is a straight character. The problem with that is not, oh, Anders is gay. The problem is, they never, you know, they didn't have the courage to make him gay from the get-go. And I, that's one of the problems I have with James Bonding. It, there tends to be the treatment of sexuality as a switch, as a dial. Yes, I know there are people who are gender fluid. I know people who are, all, you know, asexual, bisexual, transsexual, straight, uh, gay, lesbian. That's something that belongs to them. And if we believe that character, especially in such a, a, a narrative, is supposed to be so, such a serious narrative, right? It's supposed to be such a compelling narrative. The characters have to stand on their own. They have to be heroes of their own story. They have to own their characteristics. They're not up for debate, if you will, to use on the player character. 
And that's a, a very uh, a troubling situation here. The idea that all these characters, all these people exist just to fulfill uh, the fantasies of the player. Uh, the Not that you can't have uh, bisexual, again, you should have bisexual characters, you have gay characters, but you're going to have them, have them from the get-go. You know, just write the character and, and go forward. Right? Similar situation happened with Mass Effect 3. Uh, uh, a gay option, if you will, was uh, on the disc when it came to Major Alenko, but it basically got uh, it got cut. And then, uh, as there was a particular reaction from the fan base, like, oh, well, people actually like this, so we're just going to put it by. Basically, Major Alenko got retconned into being bisexual just to fulfill that. In fact, even characters were introduced into the game specifically for gay and lesbian romances uh, and I think that's troubling again you know I think it's just a matter of exploitation of sexuality for you know for fetishization for fantasies as opposed to actually showing diversity showing these people who they are right uh, it's a good that they can engage in romances but what about having these characters engage with other other people you know romance other people stuff like that um, you don't really see that in Dragon Age Inquisition you have more variety right the characters express themselves sexually the way they are uh, and if they want to be if they're gay they're gay if they're bisexual they're bisexual if they're uh, straight they're straight in fact there is even a, a transsexual character which was handled very well ironically i think the character should have been romanceable uh if you know at least one person you know to if or have that character be able to express their sexuality with a third party, right? Not because that's also a problem about, about diversity and representation. Is that oh, you have a gay character, but you never allow the gay character to express their condition. You have a lesbian character, but you never allow that that that, that character to be, uh, you know, express themselves in their own condition. They're, you know, it's a gay best friend thing. Oh, they're gay, but their 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 role in the in the narrative is to be the best friend to the straight female character, right? Uh, and that's, that again is probably has all kinds of problems. Um, and I think it's something that uh, if you're looking to uh, create diversity, you have to understand that these things belong to the characters. Just like in real life, your gender, your sexuality, your gender identity belongs to you, to the individual. It's not about others defining who you are, it's about you defining who you are yourself. Uh, another aspect that is also problematic about the way. Uh, the characters are put together is that they have very little or no relation with the multiple plots that the game presents. The only character that has any link outside of Hawk, of course, which is a hero, uh, the protagonist, uh, with all of the, the game is Barrack. And basically because Barrack is the, uh, the character serves as a framing device. He is the narrator of the story. And his uh, plot uh, mostly is concentrated on the first part of the game. It has a carryover to the last part of the game. But after that, it's just, you know, he's just a, the storyteller. Isabella is the other character that has some connection to the plot, but only as much as the second part of the game. And that's it. Uh, and then you have Anders, who has a relationship with the plot and an ongoing sort of very stretched out aspect of the plot. But... Uh, only really plays out at the very end of the of the game. It has very little, no relationship with the other parts of the game, other than something that just keeps recurring in the background. And uh, and that means that mo the rest of the characters have no connection to the main plot, and they just again they're just there because of Hawk, right? They just uh, they exist. They're there because Hawk is there. Uh, and while I do believe that there's something to be said about the trope about the magnetic hero, mo most of the time the magnetic hero uh, is someone who uh, has people join their cause, uh, first because loyalty to that person, but eventually they are convinced that the cause is w worth fighting for, right? And here, because again, there's no unified narrative, uh, the only thing is, hey, we're here because of Hawk. Even when they are uh, have no reason to be with him. In fact, there's a whole mechanic uh, about rivalry and friendship that doesn't make any sense the way it's applied. You would think their rivals will either work against you or abandon you or even try to kill you. Now, some characters do tend to abandon you uh, but then come back, depending on the relationship uh, in the game. 
which is ironic because that's also how the family, the only real people have a real connection aside someone who has been romanced again uh, with Hawk and that's, uh, you know, the family members. But again, the family members tend to abandon Hawk, uh, you know, almost uh, uh, in the beginning of the story, a character member dies. Usually it's a character member based on your class. The idea being that if you want to balance your party, you have to then lean on the character, existing character roster. It's also done for the rule of drama. And that's a problem because it's so obvious. It's such a blunt instrument to create tension and drama. Ooh, a character died. Well, I didn't know the sibling. The only thing I know about the sibling that dies in the opening, in the, in the uh, prologue, is that they're quibbling you know they're just fighting and being obnoxious i don't I, I have no time to get to know them yet they're sacrificed for the drama uh and then you lose other characters either to death or abandonment they might come back but they don't they're not uh permanently in the story unless you play certain dlcs and even then only for the duration of the dlc uh and again they leave they leave they uh they don't come back uh and then, of course, you're forced to rely on the character roster. And if you don't like the characters, it's like you're stuck with a character you don't like. Uh, like I said, I don't like what I didn't like what happened to Anders. The whole idea of using the uh, spirit of justice just didn't make any sense to me. Some people might want to justify it, but it basically was done as an excuse to say, "Hey, this is a completely different character. Same name, different character." Uh, Fenris, a character I don't like. I really don't like Fenris. Even though he has all the makings of a character that I would like, I would like Fenris because, of course, he's he's fighting for his freedom. He's escaped from a horrible situation. He's from an underclass, and he's fighting slavers. You know, every time slavery shows up in a game and I have a chance to kill or punish slavers, I go out of my way to do so. A Fallout 3 being the, the classic example where you can actually go to a place called Paradise Fall and abandon uh, Maul and it's full slavers and if you want to you can trade with them or you can wipe them out and usually when i go in i wipe the floor with them i kill them all because i can't stand the idea of slavery and so if I, if the game gives me a chance to sort of go out and say hey these are these slavers get rid of them i certainly will do so uh, i liberate people and make them free and all that but i could never really care for families it never it never uh there was it just came off wrong especially if you make a mage hawk right uh, the irony is that, you know, this is something that most games simply don't do. They don't do subtlety. So, I, we, we talk about the, uh, Dragon Age being unsubtle when it comes to drama, right? Especially killing off characters just to get an emotional rise out of you. Um, it's part for the course. However, there are times when the, the game does it very well. I think that the conflict between the siblings, especially... The uh, conflict between uh, either the mage uh, uh, sibling, uh, Bethany, if he's alive, um, with their sibling, with Hawk, can be uh, can be good. I mean, she she feels like she's a burden to the family, if you, and she's only alive if your your uh, main character is not a mage. And Carver's, which is a, the the warrior brother, the younger brother, uh, also resentment of being under the shadow. That I think was more uh, more creative created a more realistic type of tension, created certain the drama that you wanted to, family tensions, they're all sort of cooked up in the same place. Conflicts with your with your mother as well are also a cool thing. Uh, that's more subtle, right? For video games anyway. And works far better. But the idea of stripping your family members, the only people that have any reason to stick with you through thick and thin, thin uh, it's just, it doesn't make sense to me other than, hey, A, you want to do it for the drama points. B, you want to do it to have, you know, party balance and force you to like the other characters and rely on the other characters. And if you don't, then you're in, in, in an impasse, right? Uh, one could argue, and many people would argue, that the rivalry and friendship si uh, system in Dragon Age 2 is superior to the friendship system in, in Origins. Uh, and, you know, you can basically, in Origins, you bribe people through gifts to be your friends. Um, the more gifts you give them, the better. And that is, it was a bit too meta. It was too obvious. But it kind of worked. I mean, in Origins, most of the characters have their own take on what they're doing, what they're doing. 
but they had a common purpose, right? They had their own approaches and their own takes and their own view of how the world works and how they they were doing things, but they had the similar uh, goal, which was to defeat the Blight, right? Not everybody. I think there's two characters, Severin, who's just doing it because he wants to survive, uh, not being killed by the, by the crows, and uh, a DLC character they bring, which is, is doing it basically for the lols, right? She's, she's a... She's going around, you know, uh, because you had nothing better to do. And you do help her out and and, and all that. But uh, aside from that, uh, most of the characters do have connection. Different takes on it, of course, but connections to the main plot. I heard, I think, in one of uh, Matt Lee's uh, podcasts with one of the uh, people that was invited to the show saying, oh, no, it's great that people don't have that strong connection. It makes for a better plot. I don't think so. I mean, what's the point if you're... If you're working to, you should all be working together for the same goal. Otherwise, uh, you, there's no reason for for the uh, characters to be there. And in fact, there's situations I, in, in the playthrough I'm doing right now where Fenris just leaves. He leaves. Right? There's a conflict and he leaves. Will he come back? We'll see. But, you know, why have the character at all, at all there? You know? And in fact, you can even uh, jettison characters. Uh, on purpose. That's not something new. In fact, something that Bioware has done. But usually when Bioware does it, it does have other characters to complement that. Here, the roster is so thin that if you don't um, like a character or a character just leaves, you, again, you're SOL. You're screwed. And you have an unbalanced party, especially for the big fights or boss fights. Um, another aspect of it as well is that when you do engage in a romance, it tends to have a situation where uh, the the game basically gets reduced to just that, to to the interactions with your uh, character to be just about the romance. Uh, and so I often found the, the unromanceable characters like Aveline and Varric to be far more accessible. You know, you can talk to them, you know, worried about tripping into a romance, like, oh, something was misunderstood. Uh, it doesn't just become, be, become all about the romance, it becomes about the characters, exploring the characters, understanding the characters. So in conclusion, avoid, if you're uh, making a character roster, do not make a character roster uh, roster uh, using the boy band approach. Just to just have a little bit of everything just to see if you can please everyone. Because you end up pleasing no one. Second, avoid James Bonding. Unless, of course, you're making a James Bond girl, a game who has that as a, as a premise, right? The idea that, yeah, the hero... Uh, can romance everybody that comes in along, right? Uh, make sure they understand that uh, sexuality, gender, gender identity, these are things that belong to the character and not to the player. The, the character shouldn't just exist to do that. Third, uh, do not just kill off characters for the drama, uh, especially when it becomes very easy to see, you know, that you're trying to manipulate the, the emotions of the of the audience, of the player, particularly. At least for me, it was a turn-off. And finally, uh, do try to tie in most, not all, but most of the characters to the plot, or plots as they may be. Give them a reason to be there beyond just they're there because the hero is the hero, right? Just be, just like James Bonding, they shouldn't just be have the sexuality be uh, calibrated to what the player wants, these characters simply shouldn't exist and shouldn't just hang out with you just because you're the hero. Well, that's all for me for now. I apologize if there was uh, some problems with the audio. I do have a cold and I'm trying to get through it. So my voice and I might hear some sounds there. I'm trying to fix the audio. I hope you like this program. As always, uh, please comment and subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you. Good night. What made you give in? It felt like every word the demon spoke reached out and pulled at my heart.